What's going on guys? It's almost May, so be sure to watch this whole video from the beginning to the end because I got a special message at the end. Remember when trucking was all the rage? Let's say 2015 and then it really, really started to heat up around 2020 and you had a lot of people selling courses on how to buy a truck, how to hire a driver and have this person drive your truck, make you passive income and you can build a trucking company without driving the truck, without knowing anything about the industry. And I was reading an article this day on uh, Google talking about trucking is in a bloodbath. And a lot of people who bought a truck 2014 to 2020, a lot of those people actually sold their truck if they had a CDL and went to drive for these larger companies. Now, this is one of the things uh, I was reading the stats on some of these larger companies. Some of these companies have lost 25 percent of their shipments and some of these companies have lost. 90% of their shipments and what's happening is a lot of trucking companies are filing for bankruptcy and this is a sign that the economy has dipped down when we came when we had the pandemic and I, I keep saying this a lot of people disagree with me but I honestly feel that the stimulus that was interjected in the economy through PPP money, through government loans, through direct cash payments to the average citizen. I feel that was harmful. I also feel that's the reason that we have crazy inflation at the moment. And this big, massive injection of cash into the economy left a lot of people vulnerable because I was reading the stories of how many truckers, owner operators who had their own truck who was running their own authority actually sold their truck and then went to work for a larger company. And you know, the, the really large companies who work by contract, because the thing is, I was understanding that there are companies that have contracts and there was truckers who were trying to make a live, a living off of the spot loads. This is where you go to the load board. And there was a guy I used to watch quite a bit, but I stopped watching him. His YouTube channel is just trucking. And this guy owned a truck. He was running his own authority. And at one point it got so bad because I haven't watched him in a while. He was driving for Uber and his YouTube channel was doing really, really well. So I know that helped him out a lot, but here was a guy who was a trucker who talked about trucking, who talked about the load boards. He talked about, because he was living off of the, the load board, the whatever that board's called. And he was pulling off spot jobs and the jobs were getting less and less and less and less and less to the point. It didn't make sense for him to run loads on his truck. Now, once again, this was a while because I haven't watched this guy in months. I don't know what he's doing now, but I do know that the decline for small independent contractors was very, very real, it was really, really real. And a lot of these guys literally got wiped out. There was another guy, just your average trucker. I haven't seen his channel yet. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if he, cause, but he seemed to be smarter than a lot of these other truckers because he had money and he paid cash for his trucks. So I don't know what his situation is, but I have a feeling that it's better than the average trucker. And I think he had like 10 trucks. So I think he had 10 paid off trucks. I'm not hundred percent sure, but the, the, the bloodbath, this is the title trucking is in a bloodbath. And there were some companies that due to, and I, I'm going to say this, there were some companies that were doing way better than other companies. And I'm going to tell you why. The companies that were doing better than other companies had a sales force. They had people to pick up the phone, call out and book loads and get contracts. I feel the companies that are like this one company lost 90% of its business. Um, they don't have a sales force. I can, I can, I can be a hundred percent certain they don't have a sales force because here's the thing. 
yes, the economy has shifted. And, you know, on this thing of us having a recession, honestly, I don't know. And it's, we're going to go because many people is like we're heading toward a recession. More and more companies are laying off. And this may reveal itself a little later in the year, but we're in second quarter. First quarter, we did not have a recession. So we got to have a bad quarter, second quarter, bad quarter, third quarter, and the bad quarter, fourth quarter for us to slide into an official recession. And, and like I said, I was just reading this. All of these, these numbers were just really, really ugly. They were really, really ugly. So here's the thing, trucking. We could say this as a trucker. If you're a trucker or you drive a trucker, please chime in in the comments and let me know how you're doing, what's going on with you, are you, miss, are you still making money? Because here's the thing, and this is something I know. During the Great Depression, there were banks because they were better capitalized, they were better positioned. They got richer during the Depression than they were before the Depression. So what I see, and this is something else that was in the article, a lot of these trucking companies were trying to buy trucks, but during the pandemic, doing the part shortage, doing all this other stuff, they couldn't get trucks and now they're loading up on trucks. And I have an idea why the people who have the ability to get the financing, the people at the capital, they're preparing for two years down the road. And they're buying these trucks because they're cheaper and they can get them and they have a long-term strategy. They're not just trying, you know, my, one of my sales managers, he used to say, we need sales today, we need sales tomorrow, we need sales next month, we need sales next week, we need sales next year. As a business, you always need sales. And I feel, I have an understanding that the larger, better, well-capitalized companies are preparing for the future by going out and buying these new trucks. Because a lot of these trucking companies, their fleets, one, one company's fleet increased 17%, another company's fleet increased, increased 25%. So what I think is the larger companies that have solid contracts are better capitalized and what they're gonna do is eat up the market because um, honestly, you know, trucking, the way that I understand it, I've never been in the trucking business, but the way I understand it, trucking is an extremely expensive business to run. You can have one truck and then you can be on the highway, then your transmission goes out or something else happens and you're looking at an eight to $20,000 repair that you gotta pay for and this is the thing, while your truck is being fixed, it's not on the road making money. So this is why I feel that the stage for smaller truckers, for people who were not being professionals, people who were not trying to build a large fleet are getting wiped out. Literally, they're getting wiped out. They're being pushed out of the framework because orders are dropping. Amazon's laying off people. Bed, bath, and beyond. Remember that hot stock that went up and made this kid 125 million because he had 25 million to invest? That was just literally a year ago. And now Bed, Bath, and Beyond is filing bankruptcy. I feel they're going to close all their stores in Ross, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, and some gyms are looking at the spaces that they operate to take over their spaces. So, this whole thing with trucking, and this is just my opinion. If you are not getting in trucking with a goal to get as large as possible, I believe that you were setting yourself up for failure because once again, trucking is very, very expensive. I understand that if you got into trucking and you didn't at least have like $50,000 worth of business credit and incidentally, at least three or four trucks because if one of your trucks go down, you still have two trucks making money. Um, you know, trucking is really, really a hard, hard business. And I feel the bigger you are, and I'm talking about these multi carriers, these carriers who have 300, 500, 1,000 trucks, they're losing money, but they're still in business. They're still making money. And a lot of these smaller trucks, because they have contracts and they, they're doing different things. 
But a lot of these smaller truckers who are living and depending on that load board, they're literally getting wiped out, getting wiped out. And this is a lesson for those of you who want to get in business. I remember all of the talk. There's a guy who was selling a trucking course. Now he sells a dispatch course because I saw him, you know, I'm not mentioning any names, but he sells a dispatch course. He went away from selling this whole get a truck, put a driver in there to now teaching people how to dispatch. And I think that is a sign that's just how bad it's gotten for trucking. And one of the things that is um, happening is a lot of these people are going to, I think there were some people who were better positioned, better capitalized, better with better credit. I feel that these folks are going to regret trucking, getting into trucking because it's going to create some pain. Um, I don't think they're going to go bankrupt, but I think they're going to get out and they're going to realize that they lost a lot of money. They lost a lot of time. They lost a lot of efforts. Pretty much my opinion of the car rental business. Um, once again, you know, um, it's really, really bad to see a national article talking about the bloodbath of trucking. Because that really caught, because I mean, I was through my phone. It's like trucking bloodbath. I was like, what's that? And I go ahead and I read it and I just go through it and I just read all this other stuff. And the number of independent uh, contractors, and this this is the thing. And once again, this is just my business advice speaking. If you started a trucking company and you didn't ha have a goal of getting to 10, 15, 20 trucks, you were just going to participate in this. And then another part of trucking is money management putting money in the bank, paying the bills and all this other stuff. I feel a lot of people got into trucking because when the market was good, you can make a lot of money with one truck. We're talking about 300, 400, 500, 600, 700,000, depending on what market you're in. And a lot of people had that one truck, they were making a lot of money and they got comfortable. And then because of the new economic environment that we're in, once shipments and stuff stopped and slowed down because remember i did a video about a year ago talking about walmart target their warehouses were full they had a lot of inventory and this right here that was one of the things that contributed to the slowdown of trucking we already have a ton of inventory we are our stores are full our stores are stacked we, we got all this stuff and it ain't selling and we don't need more so that right there was a big uh, let down with trucking and I just look at this and this is a lesson in my opinion and I'm about to make a little detour I personally don't feel that you should get into a business because there's quote money there and once again there are people whose father was a trucker they grew up in the business and they got in trucking I'm not talking to those people because they actually have a love for the industry. They know a lot about the industry. I'm not talking to those people. I'm talking about if you was your name is Jane or your name is Jim, you were watching the YouTube or the Facebook or the Instagram. It's like, hey, trucking is a good business. And you just dived in because of the money. A lesson that I learned, a lesson that I learned with the car rental business is this is one of the things that's going to leave you. Uh, high and dry and this is one of the things that I'm I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this all over the place because you know once once again I don't really talk about trucking a lot because I'm not a trucker I'm not ever thinking about getting in trucking and also I will tell you that my analysis because even though the car rental business for me was a total nightmare I had 20 people arrested I had people selling my vehicles. I had like 60 flat tires. I feel it was really good for me because I was thinking about getting into a moving company. And I actually went out and hired someone as a consult. And I looked at the numbers, I looked at the market, and I was like, I am going to not do the moving business because what's gonna happen in 2023, in 2024, and 2025, Maybe in 2025 will be the time to get into the moving business. 
but I told the guy, thank you for the consult. You know, we had some more stuff set up. I said, I don't need it. Um, based upon the stuff that you gave me, the things you told me, I am not starting a moving business. Uh, I'm not getting in the credit repair business because the car rental business taught me to be more diligent, to do more research, to dive much, much deeper. And there are some other businesses that I'm getting ready to start that tap into my natural proclivities, that tap into my natural talents. And I'll be talking about this with my students because it's going to be very, very different. It's going to be a different mindset. It's going to be a different approach because honestly, business wise, I personally do not feel it's a good idea to get into a business because there's money. And a lot of people like recently I posted on my community page, there's this regular house. There's nothing really special about it. And it's a failed Airbnb. You can tell by the slippers on the stuff, the stuff, the way the house is arranged, the coffee maker. It's a failed Airbnb. And now they're renting it out fully furnished for 8,500 bucks per month. I was like, and it's just a regular house. And I'm just sitting there. There's a lot of people who jumped into businesses like I did. I jumped in the car rental business because, you know, I was trying to get a lot of information and it was really hard to get good, accurate information. Now, I feel that the people who are doing Toro and really Hirecar, that was the company that I use, which Hirecar filed bankruptcy. Um, you know, it's, it's not, it's easier to get more information, but I know a lot of people are pushing the car rental business because you can make all this money, you can get all these nice cars. Honestly, if you're in the right location, the car rental business may be good, but you've got to set that up and do it a certain way. And what I'm seeing with this trucking thing, and this is, this is, I don't think I've ever said this, but you have a lot of people who got into trucking just for the money with no real regard to what was going to happen with trucking once the business was up running, you had drivers, you had issues. And I already knew you now in 2015, I want no parts of the trucking business. I'm not, I, I just knew that that was just such a hard business. And unless you were going to get 20, 30 trucks and get some contracts. And this is one of the reasons that I feel that a lot of people failed at trucking. They got in the truck, they were operating off the load board and they never set up a sales force. Someone to call companies and set up contracts because that right there is a complicated procedure. You've got to hire salespeople. You got to get them on the phone. You got to work out commissions. And the average person who just fell off in the trucking business. Once again, I'm not talking about people whose daddy was a trucker. They grew up. Your father was vice president of logistics. I'm not talking to those people. I'm talking about regular, everyday, normal people who got in the trucking because of the money. And they didn't understand. Because, you know, if I was to be foolish once again i'm gonna say foolish for me to start a trucking company i would consider myself foolish but the first thing i would have established even before i bought my truck i would have established a sales organization to reach out and get signed contracts and honestly that's something that i may do because essentially if i can go ahead and create a sales force to go out and get contracts and just find truckers because that's going to be really easy at the moment because there's a lot of truckers out there that need work and I'm just joking. I'm not going to do that because I don't have time because there's so many things I'm going to do from May to December. But sales, creating a sales organization, creating a sales force, creating a lead. That's something that the average person doesn't understand, doesn't know. And this is one of the reasons that all of these average everyday Americans who got into trucking when the economy was good, and they didn't know what to do when the economy shifted and things went down. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to operate. They didn't know how to handle themselves. And, you know, I'm looking at uh, what's happening with trucking because this is a big sign. This is a huge, huge sign that all of these independent small truckers are literally being wiped out the market because the loads have dramatically decreased. Amazon is shutting down warehouses. Um, I know someone that works for FedEx and they were working full time. Now FedEx has cut their hours to 20. 
Some days they may do eight or 10 hours, but most days they only do half a schedule. They only do 20, 22 hours. And this has been going on for months. So FedEx is hurting. I don't know what's going on with UPS. I haven't done the research, but the loads across the board are down. And that's a big signal of the economy going back to its normal self. I see that the pandemic over stimulation, all of this money, this printed money, just it, it, you know, I don't really know. And this is going to be a very bold statement. I don't know if we would have been better off if people didn't get that help or we would have been better off because we had the help. That's a really hard question to answer because literally we woke up and people were saying, do not go to work, do not get on the highway and do not get in your office, do not go to your office. And all these people, I'm probably going to do a separate video talking about remote work because a lot of these companies are like saying, you got to come back to the office. And a lot of people it's like, I will quit. I will quit deuces before I come back to the office. And the ramifications of the pandemic and its lingering effects, I think are going to impact the economy for the next 30 years. Because here you had a whole bunch of people who had, who was like, hey, don't go to your office. You can't work. All this government stimulus. And people, I think, found a new religion. I think people found, oh my God, I can work from home. I personally know someone who's in tech who makes a lot of money, like close to 200K a year. And she started working from home and her life changed. She would get up early, let her dogs out. Then she would work from like seven to 12. Then she would take a nap. Then she would wake up and she would work from uh, one to three. Then she would go to the gym. So she was able to create her own lifestyle in a very high income job. And I don't know, cause uh, we haven't talked in a minute, but one of the things that I see, and once again, it's really hard for me to say, we're absolutely going to have a recession. I know shipments are down. A massive thing is happening with trucking. Amazon's down, Bed Bath Beyond is filing bankruptcy. A lot of people are starting to file bankruptcy. So we will have to wait and see what happens as we go down this path. But once again, I don't even know if I said anything because like I said, you know, I found it amusing, but I don't think I ever said anything in the video that all these people were getting in trucking because trucking is such a savage, rough business. I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy to be in trucking. It's not easy to be a trucker on the road driving through Atlanta. I mean, I see these guys all the time on the roads and I'm just sitting there like, what is it like to wake up every day where you have to deal with this? So I think, you know, hats off to the truckers because that's a really hard job. And uh, we need truckers because, you know, things don't get from point A to point B without truckers. So we need truckers. But that business is in a complete mess at the moment and a complete mess. And once again, I feel the bigger, well-capitalized, well-connected, well-financed companies will survive, grow and thrive. But all of these smaller independent truckers, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. And one of the things that you will see as we go through this change, because I'm going to say something that may be a controversial. We may not have an official recession this year. I know that's very controversial because unemployment hasn't ramped up. We have all of these companies that are laying off people, but unemployment hasn't ramped up. But we will see what happens because I'm going to be looking at the numbers just like I saw this trucking story. I mean, the trucking story that literally blew my mind because I wasn't thinking about trucking and the fact that there are so many people who have gotten into trucking and who are losing their minds, who are losing their position, who are, you know, it, it's really, really bad. It's really, really bad. And this could be a signal. It could be a signal. Once again, uh, I haven't really been investigating this stuff like I used to, 
but it could be a signal that we're about to have a recession or it could be what I call the collapse because one of the things that happened with the government intervention and all the stimulus money is it exploded markets it exploded Airbnb it exploded Toro it exploded markets and it gave a lot of people a lot of money and once again I did talk about this due to the stimulus money you had people who were making more money sitting at home on unemployment than they ever made in their life and that's dangerous that that right there is dangerous you just cannot do that to a person because once you give them a taste hit me up again hit me up again I mean so we, we just got a lot of stuff that's going on with the economy and you know I say that that's really bold that we may not have a recession because I know everyone's predicting we're gonna have a recession they see it but we may not and with the Fed I think the Fed's gonna keep doing what the Fed's gonna keep doing I don't think we're gonna see an interest rate cut in 2023 we may actually if this thing keeps going down it keeps getting bad we may actually see more rate hikes in 2024 we may see that because i didn't look it up but i don't know where we are with inflation but i think inflation's at five percent which is three percentage points higher than where we want to be because we want to be at two percent but we will see but yeah uh you don't see all these folks pushing these trucking courses anymore because you know one of the reasons that I decided not to do the moving business, and I will tell you, is I was going to have to go out and buy a truck. And that was going to be one hundred and five to one hundred and twenty five thousand. Right. And I know this. I was calling all these places to see how long you couldn't get a truck. They were telling me I was going to have to wait and I was going to have to wait. And these places were not calling me back quick, fast, and hurry. They were, it was, it was taking these places two and three weeks to get back to me. And then I just saw, wait a minute, this is just like the car rental business. I bought the cars when the market was really high. I'm suffering now because uh, I've lost about 150,000 off the sale of these cars. And I just saw, I was like, wait a minute. So I got to buy a truck. It's going to be six figures because I was going to get a newer truck. Then I got to get an office. I got to get insurance. I got to do all this other stuff. And once I looked at the market, I really looked at the market and I said, this is not going to be good. No time soon. Don't do it. And that was my internal message to myself. Don't do it because, you know, um, I learned from the car rental business. I learned a lot. And that's why I said, even though, um, you know, people ask me, did you make money? Did you lose money? Due to the fact that I have a holding company, due to the fact that I have companies that are making money and I had a company that lost money, uh, this is going to benefit me from a tax percentage for the next three years. So last year, this year, and in 2024, because my losses are going to be over what I can claim this year, so they carry over into 2024. So technically, I made money didn't lose money but let's look at what it took to make that money you know before I got in the car rental business I was working like two to four hours a day you know I was just had plenty of free time I was just doing my thing and I got in that car rental business there were some days I was working 16 hours a day because I had to check them in I had to do all this other stuff getting the kill switches and I was just looking at this it's like it was a complete disaster to my personal free time in the way that I wanted to live my life. It was a hundred percent just a disaster to that. And even though it was bad and there was a lot of things that happened, I still feel from a personal edification standpoint, it was good for me because I will never do that again. This is like credit, the credit business. I, I signed up some people. I fixed their credit, the, the uh, moving business. I looked at that. And once again, because I'm looking at these businesses, with a very keen eye, I'm just like, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to actually get into that. We're not. No, no, no. And, you know, once again, um, it's, it's very, very interesting. The things that I've learned and looking at, but some of my immutable principles, like I don't think you should start a business for money. I think you should start a business to help people to create 
a different level of energy. That's why I think you should start a business. And one of the things that we're seeing is those immutable laws of starting a business are becoming true because there are people whose granddaddy was in trucking, their daddy was in trucking. And these are the people who are at these large companies that are going to survive this. But all of the folks who just like get a truck, hire some drivers, make me some passive income, they're not doing really well at the moment. They're not doing well at the moment. And just like when I was looking, cause you know, when I did the car rental business, I did a lot of financial projections. I was like, if I had this many cars, would this work out? And on paper, the business looked amazing. It looked amazing. But in real life, that business completely and utterly sucked. So once again, we, we'll be having more conversations about this. All right, Monday, it all starts. There's a lot of stuff that's gonna go down on Monday, so be ready. What I want you to do is to get into the money management course. That's gonna be a critical, critical con component of everything that we're gonna build off because all the stuff that we're gonna talk about and do in May, there's gonna be new training in May, there's gonna be new training in June, there's gonna be new training in July, there's gonna be new training in August, there's gonna be new training in September, there's gonna be new training from May to December. And every month there's gonna be something new. And what I'm gonna do is give the people who sign up for the money management course the best discounts. Because uh, I'm not gonna, I, I don't even know how I'm gonna do it, but you wanna get in the money management course and you wanna be setting yourself up for the new training. And we're gonna get into some very important training. You know, becoming the person that you need to be to become successful because success is behaviors and habits and if you go ahead and develop the right behaviors and the right habits this is going to set you up to win in the long run so what i want you to do is go below get the money management course and this stuff starts monday it's going to start monday and we're going to get into a lot of things there's a this is a busy weekend for me because uh, one of my cars the tire was showing thread so i had to get a new tire and i was just sitting there like that that was just crazy but once again a lot of stuff that's going to happen and next week is going to be the preparatory week we're going to be talking about the things we're going to do and we're going to set up so for you to be part of this you want to get in the money management course because the money management course are going to get the discounts and all of those emails and i will advertise it on youtube but i will not be advertising it with the discount <laughs> not at all so we will see so make sure that you go and get and get in the money management course and get ready for next week next week's going to be hot and heavy we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff we're going to be doing a lot of stuff and we're going to open up a lot of doors my name is glenn cameron i will see you guys in the next video